Welcome to the Shipping Podcast, where I meet interesting maritime professionals sharing their passion for the shipping industry and their everyday job. I am your host. My name is Lena Gothberg. Hello, Shipping Podcast lovers. Welcome to the 176th episode of the Shipping Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. The other day when I was looking at the statistics for downloads of my podcast, it hit me that I am actually touching someone somewhere every day. You see, every day people listen to the Shipping Podcast somewhere in the world. This podcast is now downloaded in more than 190 countries and by more than 6,000 people every month. It's mind-blowing in a way to realize that so many listeners out there is interested in hearing what I have to say. I started this podcast over six years ago to try and change the way the maritime industry is looked upon. I believe that I have succeeded by giving a platform to the maritime voices, especially to the women in the maritime industry. But this is a long-tailed commitment. However, thinking about all of you that listens to my lovely guests and me made me realize that we can change things together. I don't have to do this on my own. What got me going was that I spoke with an old friend of mine, someone I used to collaborate with on maritime projects. We had a virtual coffee break together, as one do in these virtual times, and we went down memory lane and discussed all the things that we have accomplished together, but concluded that there are still so many things that need to be done. The work we did was about 10 to 15 years back in time, And it was a strategy for the maritime cluster in Sweden. We worked very hard and we could see that we started to have an influence on all the stakeholders involved. But then the project was taken over by the government and was watered down into something similar to salt water. As things stand now, it's like it was before we even put in all of that hard work. Why is that? Is it the pandemic making everyone focus on survival of their own business and not as much upon the bigger picture? Or wasn't the industry ready for some strong females taking the lead? Or is it that our project failed when it got into the hands of the politicians? I don't know. There could be a number of reasons. But we began to identify what ingredients that are essential to make a project successful. As the conversation went on, we again agreed that every project without some influential people backing it and a solid financial ground will not succeed. That's unfortunately, is just the fact of life. And we left the virtual coffee break with a smile on our faces. I continue to think about our conversation and wonder which of all the projects currently underway in the maritime industry will become successful and which one will fail. We have some significant undertakings going on right now. How will we reach the sustainable maritime industry? Where do we see the influential people gathering and putting some money where their mouth is? I can see some people looking to the IMO for leadership. But IMO is not stronger than its member states. And member states are the governments in the countries where we live in. And I'm not sure that IMO wants to take on that leadership. When I visited the IMO a few years back to do some interviews, again and again, I heard people say, that the responsibility of the IMO is, quote, only the safety and security of shipping 
and the prevention of marine and atmospheric pollution by ships. It's not to lead the maritime industry in the change we are currently undergoing. The maritime industry cannot live isolated. We are influenced by global trends as everyone else. In episode 164, Valentina Keys spoke about the three Ds that we need to focus on right now. And those are digital, decarbonization and diversity. If you haven't listened to episode 164, I definitely recommend you to do that. Another global trend is collaboration. Everyone speaks about collaboration and partnership right now in every industry out there. No one is strong enough to change things alone, not even me. But together we can change both the path we are on and the perception of us as an industry. We just need some influential people taking the lead and solid financial ground to stand on. Then we're on the move. I am trying to change the perception of the maritime industry by producing this podcast. And as I said before, I've been doing that for more than six years now. The shipping podcast and the conversations held help drives the change. I know that from all the feedback that I get, mostly from young people. Some are already bitten by the bug and some are interested in getting a career in the maritime space. Together we are making a difference. Think about how you want to change the perception of your company and the entire maritime industry. That is really important. If you want to support me in continuing to deliver conversations that can change the perception of the maritime industry, please drop me a line at hello at shippingpodcast.com and we'll take it from there. I don't know if you are aware that I have sent out a newsletter every other week for almost a year now. I release it the weeks where there is no new podcast episode. I write a little bit of behind the scenes when interviewing and producing my podcast. But lately I have felt like a columnist when I write about what's at the top of my mind. And it's usually digital and or diversity. There are so many things that I would like to change if I only had the chance. You can subscribe to the newsletter if you visit the website shippingpodcast.com. The next edition of the newsletter is out on Friday, the next Shipping Podcast Friday. So, until the next time, from me to you, over and out. Thank you for listening to the Shipping Podcast. Don't forget to tell everyone that you meet that there is a shipping podcast available and that they should download it and listen to the maritime professionals who are sharing their passion for the shipping industry. 